Streamers have a load of different resources they go to to answer some of their burning questions and things they need help with. Streamer Twitter is one of these things. However, it's kind of crazy over there. Follow me on Twitter, by the way. But another one of those resources is Reddit or slash Twitch. A mountain of knowledge, some great, some not so great. However, in today's video, I want to go through some of this month's top posts from streamers and give my two cents on some of the things that have been asked by streamers in the community. I think a lot of the things we go through today are going to be super relevant for streamers of any size. So make sure you watch all the way through to get some good knowledge and power. Power? Yes. Scientific studies show that by liking and subscribing and enjoying this video, you will become more powerful. Another thing that will definitely help you in your quest to greatness and power is today's sponsor, Own.TV. If you've watched this channel before, you've probably heard me talk about Own.TV, but there is a reason for it. Own.TV have an absolute plethora of animated stream packages that look absolutely amazing. Whether you're looking for a webcam board or some new amazing alerts, some starting soon screens, BRB screens, and even transitions, they have you covered. They've got so many different packages that are super affordable, as well as a really amazing emote maker that is super easy to use and provides you with a really amazing emote once you're Finished. Also, what's amazing about own stream packages is that they are modular, meaning that so if you and your friend or you and another streamer have the same bundle, they won't look exactly the same when you're finished with them. Super cool service, and you could also save a massive 50% discount by using code X2Shoes at checkout. And with own being as affordable as it is already, an extra 50% off on top of that, very cool. Click the link down in the description and check it out now. Thanks again to own for sponsoring today's video. So if you've never been on or slash Twitch before, definitely check it out. It's really, really cool. You find some typical kind of streamery posts, but you also find some really nice gems and solutions to some problems that you may not even know you were having until you read someone else post about it. So without further ado, I've picked out some of my favorite posts. I think were super interesting that I want to talk about. I'm going to get straight on into that now. Let's do a cool zoom transition here and I'll look like I'm pushing the camera away like a Sweet, I definitely think the editor did that and didn't meme on me. Should I ban this guy? So basically I took a sponsorship recently to fund my donation goal capture card Most of my viewers were very supportive But one of my longtime viewers kept harassing me with things like sellout and you're pathetic and corporate chill and such I had to ask him to stop because it was kind of ruining the mood yet again He kept going after stream we talked in private and I said if something like this happens again I'm gonna ban it. Am I the a-hole for taking measures like this or should I just ignore him? Firstly, you are not the a-hole here. Look, the thing about sponsors is I see a lot of people complaining about creators taking certain sponsorships. It's no secret that creators do take sponsors simply for the paycheck. They may not actually believe in the product, which is a little bit bad, but at the same time, you can't pretend to know everybody's financial circumstance. I work with some incredible brands and sponsors on this channel that I've formed a long-term relationship with that are all products that I personally believe in. I've done my due diligence, I've researched them, and I really support what they do, and that's great. Because I'm lucky enough to have that, that means that I'm able to avoid certain kind of more sell-outy sponsorships that streamers get offered. And this is the case for a lot of creators. However, if you're a creator who has a sponsorship like that and that brand decides not to keep you on after your contract runs out, you might need to supplement that income elsewhere. So sometimes streamers are left with no other choice rather than to sometimes take these more sell-outy sponsorships because, you know, they might need that income. Like creators have no fixed income. They're not guaranteed a paycheck at the end of the month. They've got no dental care. They've got no medical care. They've got no all these things for the most part. And that's their choice. But you don't know the personal situation that a streamer is going through. So I think unless this is happening like all the time on somebody's stream, maybe cut the streamer a break a little bit. Like at the end of the day, they are creating the content for free for people to consume. So what's the harm if there's a once in a blue moon sponsored stream? That would be my opinion with it. Let me know down below. I'm obviously coming here from a biased perspective of a creator, but I'd like to know. Here's a quick bit of advice for streamers. If you are approached by a brand, please do do your research on that thing or that product. I receive about no no joke about 10 emails a week that are all just scam products you name it, I've been asked to promote it. Even at a size of my channel, they're out there and they'll get you. There's a big difference between accepting a sponsor for maybe a crappy mobile game versus something that could take your viewers' money. So please do your research. Next person says, why do you get comments like this? How do you respond? If you gift me, I'll follow. I would argue that every single one of you, if you're a streamer, have gotten a comment similar to this in your chat before. Really, I don't get it. Like, why would you want a gifted sub to a channel you aren't even following yet? It makes no sense. So what, you can spam emotes, leave, and then never come back. 
it, I just don't get the mentality. Does the person who's saying this thinks that the, the creator is desperate enough for like a follow that they'll like hopefully get someone to gift them a sub? I really don't understand the psychology around it, but it's mainly just people being idiots and it can be a little bit disruptive, especially if they start spamming it, which they write it once, you ignore it, they're likely to write it again. I would have it in your rules to say like, don't ask for a gifted sub. I would also make sure your mods are aware that if somebody asks for a gifted sub to just like flag it with them and be like, hey, don't ask for a gifted sub. I actually did this in my how to be an annoying streamer video before. If you want to see how to handle this, go check out that video because I did it to I did it to a streamer and they handled it absolutely brilliantly. So check that out if you want to see how it was handled. Okay, I'm going to ask for a gifted sub. That's what I'm going to do. Any gifters? Hi. Any gifters? Um, I appreciate it. I can't, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't. Mod deleted my message, mod deleted my message, okay, good, very good moderator. Where the gifters? Ah! Okay, good! Not really appropriate to add, okay. Okay, I'm timed out for 600 seconds. I'm gonna leave it at that. It's all I needed. A real streamer's mindset. I tried to talk to somebody about my choice to begin streaming. In that conversation, I mentioned how I've chosen to step into this relaxed mindset towards streaming. Not stressing to get millions of viewers and billions of follows and all that, and let the growth happen how it does. That sort of thing. Their response was along the lines of, well, then just give up now. That's not a real streamer's mindset. This really threw me off since I think it's the worst thing a streamer can do is stream just for success and not because they just like to stream. I want to see what others thought because Honestly, I feel like they're wrong, but at the same time, it's one of those statements that's so surprising you, you actually question it. I've made no secret about how I hate this mindset. And I've, I've talked about it in previous videos and I'm going to reuse my own analogy here, which is if I was to take up basketball tomorrow, I'm not gonna go out onto the basketball court with the express intent that in a year's time or two years time, I'm gonna be a professional basketball player earning millions of dollars playing in the NBA. No, maybe I liked watching basketball as a casual viewer of the sport and I decided to do it for myself for a hobby and something to do. And then maybe I get really good at it then and some things start to change. See where I'm going with this? You should start streaming because it's fun and see where it goes. Anyone I have seen personally with this attitude never works out for them because what they do is they put so much pressure on themselves to make it that they forget about the fundamental thing of Twitch is that you actually have to be having fun for other people to enjoy you. I know that's such bullshit advice. Everyone just tells you, oh, just have fun. But at the same time, if you're watching a TV show where all the actors look bored out of their mind, it's not gonna be a very fun TV show. If you're watching a stand-up comic and they look bored out of their mind on stage, it's not gonna be a very good stand-up comedy special. If you take all the focus away from the actual content and the enjoyment of it, for both you and your viewership and just focus on like, gotta make a video, gotta, gotta stream, gotta do this for 14 hours and you know, gotta post a TikTok 17 times a day and just like overloading your brain with this like content, 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 although may be enjoyable for you at the start, it's just not a great way to do it. It's not a great way to dive into it. You'll hyper focus on it and you'll burn yourself out before you hit a thousand followers. I'm sure there's some streamers out there who have had this mindset and it's worked out for them. I understand that, you know, a lot of people who are successful in business or whatever didn't go into business with, oh, I'll just do it as a hobby and see what goes. I get that you have to have a drive and you have to have goals and there's nothing wrong with that. That's healthy in my opinion. But putting all your eggs in the basket of this of this working for me is not fantastic. Because if it doesn't work out for you, you will be crushed. And if you do whatever it takes to get to the top and that still doesn't work out for you, you could leave yourself in a pretty bad situation. I honestly think that starting out with an open mindset to any of this is pretty healthy, right? You're doing it as a hobby now, but you're also open to, well, in time, this could change, right? If I start to see some growth in this and some success, maybe I can have a different conversation with myself later on on whether or not I want to take this a little bit more seriously. I genuinely think that's the best mindset to do it. That way you're not letting yourself down should it not work out for you and you're not putting way too much pressure on yourself for it to also work for you. I do realize that everybody's different and that's purely just my opinion, but I would love to hear what you think about it. Are you somebody who started streaming like with the express intent of being huge or are you somebody who just does it for fun? Let me know. No wrong answers. Do I have too much variety in streaming? Not an affiliate or have some kind of big numbers, but I mainly stream drawing, music, recording, and video games. I was wondering if having this variety in content hinders people from getting reoccurring viewers. It absolutely does. 
It absolutely does. But that's not a bad thing. I am a variety streamer. I do most of the things that this person mentioned. And I am a variety streamer, I would like to think, in every sense of the word. Heck, lately on my streams, I've literally been doing whatever I want. I don't really have any plan with it because I've been less focused on playing what is good for my numbers and more focused on just doing what I think I want to do that day. But when you are a variety streamer, you kind of inherently have to deal with this because, you know, you'll stream a game or you'll stream in a certain category that is super cool or that has really good viewership numbers in terms of like low amount of streamers, high amount of viewers or whatever. And you'll probably do better numbers depending on the popularity of the game, etc. Things like Dark Souls for me. My numbers were crazy when I streamed Dark Souls for the first time, especially compared to my average viewership at the time. I streamed Dark Souls for like a month or so. And then when I left Dark Souls, a lot of the viewers that would be in my chat every day watching me never came back because they just wanted to watch Dark Souls. And that's completely fine. For like every five or 10 followers you might get in that category, some of them will just be there to watch you stream that game. However, one of two of those people, you will convert into, you know, a longtime follower who will want to watch you if you're playing Dark Souls or Animal Crossing. It doesn't matter. In my opinion, it's a little bit of a longer, you know, period to grow when you stream variety content, because like that, you gain a lot of followers from all these different categories, but not everybody wants to watch everything. And that's completely fine. That's people's different tastes. But I love the fact that having done variety content for two years, I've now built up a base of followers who will watch me and no matter what I'm playing and the or singing or painting or whatever. And the game is just kind of background to them. And that's how I've marketed my stream. I do think you'll grow a lot faster if you were to stick to one category or two categories and kind of people know that they can come back to that all the time. And that's what they like. But the problem I've seen with a few creators when it's done that way is that, you know, somebody gets super bored of playing this one category that yes, is doing well for them numbers wise. However, they just get burned out of the game and don't want to play anymore. I don't think there's any such thing as too much variety unless, you know, you're changing what you're doing on stream every 20 minutes. Maybe then it's a little bit much. But I think that if your stream is centered around your personality and less about what you're doing, then it's completely fine. Do whatever you want in your stream and test out the waters. There's been times where I've like literally streamed one game for two or three months. And there's times where I've wanted to change literally every day for a month. It's just what it is. And people will either vibe with that or not. Totally fine while you're finding your feet, I think. How do you create an atmosphere on stream? It's really hard to explain, but when I watch an average streamer, I'm fully aware that they are just a guy in a room playing video games. When I watch a good streamer, I feel like I'm immersed in the stream, even if they are just a guy in a room playing video games. What makes this difference? What do you do to achieve a vibe, so to speak? This is a really good question because so many times I see new streamers focused on like building a community and like building this and it's all about community and blah, 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 blah. You can't just build a community by having people in your chat. You know, uh, building a community or building a vibe or an atmosphere just is something that has to happen naturally. You can facilitate this and you can provide a space and a discord and a stream and a, a code of conduct or rules or whatever and a certain energy from you. However, actually building that community takes time. There's no real, I don't think, shortcuts as a streamer that you can take to kind of achieve that. It is something that just kind of happens naturally throughout the stream. I remember when I first started streaming, I really couldn't wait till there was like a private joke or like a meme. And I used to try and force that, you know? I used to try and like, like latch on to something I had said or something that would happen. And I'd be like, oh, everybody remember, remember this? Or, you know, I'd try to make it happen. I think that for me was like a sense of like achievement, right? That like, oh, I'm big enough now that like my community have an in-joke. But it just happens in time and it happens on its own. I know it's kind of a lame answer, but it does. The more you kind of are live and stream and, and kind of gain a following, like the following talk to each other in the chat, they get used to each other, they get to know each other. And that's when that atmosphere and that vibe starts to happen because it's, it's not just about your interaction, it's about their interaction with each other as well. However, that word interaction is so important. I don't think I've ever seen a streamer who's just kind of sitting there silently create a vibe or create an atmosphere. There has to be interaction from you as the streamer in order to incentivize reaction from the community, which then all culminate into this community feel or this atmosphere feel. So everybody, that's my Reddit deep dive for today. Videos have been a little bit different lately. I've just been kind of doing a few random different things while we're kind of working on some other stuff in the background. So we should be back to kind of normal growth style videos before you stream series all that kind of stuff soon so you know i hope you're enjoying these little kind of shorter videos or more kind of open conversational videos while i'm working on some other stuff as well remember everyone if you liked the video today please do leave a like on it it is amazing if you do you're so good i appreciate you and if you would like to please consider subscribing as well if you're new here i post news twitch and streaming content every single week and it's a good time i promise and thank you to everybody who's liked and subscribed so far I really do appreciate it I'll see you all next week i hope you have amazing weeks on your own content and if you don't don't worry about it next week's a new one peace out much love bye-bye